This right here is the Canon RCIP100 PTZ controller. The operating system and the physical controls are 100% different on this controller compared to the RCIP1000 PTZ controller from Canon. If you have the IP1000 controller, I just want you to know that this video is not going to be helpful to you. Hi, I'm Nathan from Crazy Amazing Designs. My goal is to train and educate leaders to do church and event production with excellence. So thank you for watching this video. Let me know in the comments your favorite part of this controller and the setup. Now back to the Canon RCIP100 controller. If you haven't registered your Canon PTZ cameras with this controller yet, tap Settings, Network, Camera Registration. Under IP, tap Auto. The controller will search the network for cameras and assign them to buttons on the main screen. If the controller does not find any cameras, then make sure the controller has been assigned an IP address. Tap Settings, Network, Controller. Input an IP address here. If the cameras are brand new, then they need to set up before the RCIP100 controller can find them. If this is the case, you're gonna see this message on the video output from the camera. You can see here in my video switcher, the camera is outputting this message, it's going into my switcher. I'm going to assume that your camera has been set up. If you'd like to know more about this process of setting up new cameras, check out my video where I go into detail about setting up a new Canon PTZ system. Before we look at the details of the controller or the cameras, we need to find the IP addresses of our cameras on the network. One great way to do this is by using the remote camera control application on a computer. These cameras are set to DHCP, so they could get a new IP address as often as every 24 hours. For a permanent install, set the cameras to have a static IP address. These are demo units, and I've been connecting them to all sorts of networks so they don't have static IP addresses. In this software, I'll go ahead and search for cameras connected to my network, and after searching, I found both cameras just like that. If the cameras are not set up, you can find them here. If they are set up, you can find them here. On the RCIP100 controller, this is the camera selection section. We can see that camera one is available and selected, but camera two appears to be broken because of the icon that is showing. The camera is broken because the IP address of the camera has changed since it was last communicating with this IP100 controller. We need to tap on Settings, Network, Camera Registration. Under IP, click Manual. Here we can update existing configured cameras programmed into the controller. I'll just select camera two and then change the IP address to what I see it to be in the remote camera control application. Before leaving this camera, I want to point out that if you don't type in the camera's username and password, you're not gonna be able to change certain settings from the controller. Specifically, once you mount the camera upside down, I have found the setting to flip the image cannot be changed without the camera credentials. If we actually want to be able to control more settings on the cameras, we're going to have to type in the administrator password for the camera. So on page three, we're going to go to system and then video flip, we're going to enable it. Now, if your admin password is not in there, it won't even let you, it'll, you'll click on that and it'll say, it'll yell at you. So now I should be able to have control over both of these cameras. Check out my video on using a stream deck to save and recall presets on the Canon PTZ cameras. If you have this IP100 or the IP1000 controller, the functionality of the stream deck still makes it the perfect companion. So you see this F3, all of the buttons on this controller, so the F1, F2, F3, F4 knobs, and then there's the user one and user two. And you can see here, so on the left side of the window, we've got white balance, black balance, uh, black R slash B to adjust the black balance, basically speed and exposure focus. So let's start with white balance. So if I wanna change the white balance, I can uh, use the F1 and the F2 to change the gains on the red and black of the white balance, but then I can also click user one to change it from auto white balance to manual, and I can go through all of the different settings on the camera that the controller has access to. So I'm just gonna set it to manual, and then uh, I, can wipe, I can calibrate the white balance by pushing user two, and it'll take a look at things and calibrate the white balance. F4 is set to adjust the pan tilt speed, so I can go ahead and turn that up and down. Uh, the black balance, we can adjust these settings here. We can adjust these settings here. Speed, we can adjust our focus speed and our zoom speed, so how fast it zooms in and out, how fast the focus happens. 
but I'm guessing that's for manual focus, if you're gonna be adjusting that manually. And then exposure, I'm gonna go ahead and click on user two to take that out of P, which is like, I think everything auto except for exposure. So you can do that manually. So we can click through those settings and then I can put that back in manual. And then I have iris control here. I can turn that up and down. Based on where the camera, how far it's zoomed in and out is gonna give you your minimum and maximum iris uh, control. So I can see right all the way zoomed in, I'm on an f4.5. If I zoom all the way out, I'm now back down to 2.8. So it's good to know that that, and it also shows you the zoom and how far, how much zoom the camera is currently set to. Uh, let's go to the right side of the screen now. I'm currently selected camera one, and now all the settings are to select camera one. So there's also the presets down here, so I can view presets, I can store presets, I can delete presets. So let's go ahead to store. Let's pick a position. Go ahead and set the preset position on the clock there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and hit store and then click preset position one and then click enter. So now it's stored it. And now if I go to view, I can go to five and it'll change all the settings and it'll go to five. And then if I wanna go to one, I can go to one. So it's actually storing a bunch of white balance settings in these, as you can see. So we wanna make sure that we're adjusting everything and then setting all of our presets or setting our presets so that none of that stuff gets stored in there. This controller, I don't think it has a way to specify what gets stored in that preset. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you adjust things before you store a preset so that your white balance for that event is all gonna be the same across all of your presets. So view is just to view presets, stores to store presets, delete, I can click on a preset and then I can click enter and it'll delete it. One very interesting thing is in the top right, PT active, I can also do PTZ only, and then I can turn it off. So now I can't do anything, nothing works. This PT active is a very important feature of the RCIP100 controller. This button disables functions of the controller. PT active turned off disables the pan tilt operation by the control lever on turns these functions back on. If you just want this surface used as a PTZ controller, then PTZ F only is perfect as it limits the functionality of the controller. Users can still PTZ and use presets and trace functions, but not adjust menu settings. Um, let's go over to camera control. So with the camera selected and I can use the buttons down here to go between my cameras, it's really nice because I only have two cameras. So it's literally going back and forth between the cameras, but you can also use the groups and the cameras. So camera control, I've got my camera one selected and you can see that everything is in auto mode. So our shooting mode is in P, which means that if I click on these auto stuff, I can't turn it off. I need to go over to my exposure and change this to manual. Oh, because I have it on PTZ only. Okay, now it's back to manual. So I'm on the camera control page. I need to make sure my PT is active. So now I can change it to manual and now I can turn off, I can push these buttons to turn stuff off. And because white balance was, let's change that back to manual. And now I can manually adjust that because I don't want it on auto. And then ISO can be manually adjusted. Shutter can be manually adjusted. Iris can be manually adjusted. So the trace tab is really interesting because we're gonna again use our view store and delete. So right now I can view a trace and I can execute it. If I go to store, I can then click start recording. Well, I click on the trace, then start recording. And now I can go ahead and move my camera around, move it up to there, move it down to there, move it to there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stop my trace. Now to execute the trace, I'm going to go to the view tab. I'm gonna prepare trace and select number one. And now I'm gonna go and execute trace and the trace duration time is set to eight seconds. So that's gonna determine how fast that goes through the trace. And that should be it. I can prepare the trace again and then it'll execute trace and it takes eight seconds to go through those different positions of that trace. Yeah, you can also delete traces, click enter, and then we can store a new trace. We'll click three this time, trace number three, start recording. Let's just go ahead and pan till it's not stop at all. Let's just go around in a loop. Okay, and then I'll stop recording. And then I've recorded a trace. It's gonna take eight seconds to execute. 
So now I can go ahead to the View tab and I can click on 3, Prepare Trace, and then Execute Trace. And it's just not going to stop moving. It's going to go around and around and around and do exactly what I did. So let's execute a trace without preparing it first. So 3, Execute. No, I guess you have to prepare it. 3, Prepare, and then Execute. And we can cancel it at any time if we just want it to be done. Now let's go over to the Function tab, and there's a ton more settings that you can adjust on this camera. We can uh, turn on and off the digital zoom right there. Uh, we can turn off and on some other stuff. We can go through all these different pages and these different tabs and see what's available and what is uh, what we're able to do. That's cool. There's a washer, a wiper. Some of the cameras, they have a wiper on the front of them so that you can, if it rains, you can, you know, so you can run that basically right there. If I'm on, if I have a tab selected for white balance, for example, and I want to click off of this, if I click it again, it'll take me back to the normal page. So this is the page where I can adjust things. So F1, I can adjust the time in seconds, the speed of uh, the preset position time. So I go to camera presets, go to view, and I can click on five and it's really moving slow because I've adjusted the preset moving time to 10 seconds. So it's gonna take quite a bit longer than it would before and to get from position to position. I'm gonna click number one again. I'm gonna turn it down as it's going. So that's not gonna work, do anything. It has to uh, get turned down and then you have to click the preset and now it'll go really fast. So you can't adjust it once the preset position starts moving. We can also adjust the zoom speed up and down right here. And every little click, 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 click of the knob is a, uh, a degree. So I also have the speed. I can use the uh, user one button to turn the speed mode to change it. So I can change it from time to zero to hundred if I just want a simpler way to look at it. And if I click on something, I want to change one of these. If I click on user two, for example, so let's see what we can assign to this button. I click on it, change settings, yes. And now it opens up this menu and now all these options and actually there's a bunch of pages of things that I can put there so we can customize this setup to really help us, uh, under, yeah, help us with what we're doing and which is how I'm going to set the zoom to be over here. So let's go back to home. And now this F3, if you notice, I still can't zoom in and out on this controller. So we're going to go ahead and fix that so that we can zoom in and out. So yeah, can't zoom in and out. So this is F3. and I'm going to click on F3 and that is on the normal page. So if I click white balance, for example, um, that F3 is going to change when the white balance is selected. So if I select F3, OK. I'm going to go ahead and click on the zoom, enter. And now once it finishes up, now we can see the zoom. And if I show you the camera, now you can see that when I zoom in and out with the knob on the uh, joystick, that it actually moves the camera. And if I go to another page, so right here, I just went to the white balance page. So I'll go ahead and click off of that. And you can see that zoom is on F3. But if I click on white balance, now you can see that I can set up something else so that when we're on that page, I can do something else to affect whatever I want to affect, but they're independent. Every page is independent, so you have to be on the right page to do the task that you want to do. This thing takes a fortnight or two to actually turn back on. So that's kind of the control surface of the cameras. Let's click settings. Let's go to video and let's go to all cameras off. Enter. And let's see what that does. So that's going to go ahead and turn all the cameras off, I do believe. So it says completed. It only turned off the N500, not the N300. Close, let's go back to home, and let's select the N300. So I can still control the N300, but I can't control the N500. In fact, the, N the N500 is camera number one, which is currently uh, says it's offline. So let's go to settings, let's go to video, let's go to all cameras on, enter, completed, and you can see it's booting back up. It looks good, okay, go back to close. Home, settings again. Okay, so now let's go to menu control. This screen, but I think you can turn the actual camera's menu on that goes out the SDI output. 
but I'm not really sure on this one. I actually can't get it to do uh, what I think it's supposed to do. I'll have to read the manual on that one. Let's go to back. Uh, let's go to controller function. So you can see a bunch of different settings about the controller. Uh, we can adjust the touch screen tap volume. It's really annoying, so I like to turn that either off or on minimum, but not have it on advanced. Uh, power saver is an option if you want to set the controller to fall asleep after some time, or if you wanted to make it never fall asleep, just click off. You can change the brightness of the actual controller uh, screen, which is really nice. You can go back to default settings or default user settings. So all the stuff that we manually set up, you can reset there. You can also export all of the information from this controller to a USB, which is really nice. I always highly recommend having a backup set up for a controller like this so that you can actually like, you know, not lose all your stuff. And you can inverse some things like the pan, the tilt, the zoom direction. So let's go to back and network. Uh, click on controller. We can give the controller an IP address. Very important. It's not gonna be able to find any cameras without an IP address. And this thing doesn't seem to really like DHCP. So you kind of have to give it a IP address before it can do anything. Camera registration. We can auto search for unregistered cameras. Click enter and it'll go on the network and find all the cameras that are currently unregistered to this control surface, but it's not gonna find any because, well, like click home, we only have two cameras on the network and they're both already in here. So we're back to settings, network, camera registration, and you can also add serial cameras for, through here. And the most important part is you click manual and you can switch between the cameras that are connected and you can change their IP addresses manually, and you can also give them the administrator password, username and password for the cameras so that you can control the, set, the more advanced settings of the cameras. I'll click back to home, go back to settings, and then touch screen is our last window. This is a calibration, calibration or a little game. I'm not very good at this game, as you can see. And then open source license is just information about the license, I guess, on the control surface. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about a PTZ camera setup, send me an email and I'd be happy to help you with a new system or sign up for a training session with me at crazyamazingdesigns.com. See you soon, bye.